Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Watch Natalie spelled N-A-T-A-L-E-E. -E. I'm here to do your reading for Friday. I think I would write this down beforehand. Friday, June 14th, 2019. <sighs> wow, I just feel like really jazzed or really pumped about this for some reason. Something, I don't know. I'm like, okay. I'm, not, I'm even going to forget my spiel. So... The spiel is, is that time spirals. So what does that mean for energy? What it means is that you can resonate with this. <laughs> well, yeah, I just, I just went, I did, I knocked and then I went, cut it right in half, right in half. I knew they wanted me to get started like right out the gate. Look at manifesting happiness, manifesting longevity. Someone here, 11, 11, four of staves. Someone here could be completely rewriting their life some in here it could be completely taking control of their life like by the reins okay the magician look at he the red and the white of his robes reflect the red and the white of these flowers the lilies of pure thought and the red roses of desire he has the cosmic lemnus gate above his head he has the wand reaching up towards the sky and the others pointing down towards the earth he has, he gets power from above and through desire brings it down into manifestation. Okay, it's a talent, it's a skill. This is a very skilled person. This is you. This is you, the watcher. You are the one who is taking life by the reins. You are taking control of something. You are changing your outcome by taking something you are imagining you're pulling it from the ethers. You're pulling it from the sky, it seems like. The cosmos. The cosmos. And through desire, through wanting something like this, maybe you're just like seeing this in your mind's eye and you're just focusing on it. You're seeing it, you're seeing it, you're seeing it. And whatever you're doing, whatever changes you're making in your life, through desiring this and imagining it and seeing it in your mind's eye, you are taking the steps and the actions in your life to bring it up into being, to actually see it before you, to touch it in your hands, to hold it in your arms. Incredible. The first shuffle, before the first shuffle even happened. Yeah, someone's ready. Someone's totally taking, someone's using their magic. Someone is using their power. Someone didn't know that they were a magician. Now someone knows they're a magician. Now someone knows their true power. Now someone's connecting with their powers. You are another person. That's what I feel. That's what I feel, that excitement. It's someone, you're a wizard, Harry. It's someone that didn't know that they had much more power and control. They thought they knew what power and control was and they didn't know um, until recently that it was power control over yourself and to change your outer forms, the outer forms of your life. Please, what's that? What's please? Please, please, you're hearing, please doesn't control you anymore. Please doesn't control you anymore. Please doesn't control you anymore, Oops, please. Someone's being desperate. Someone's making a desperate bid for power. Desperate, please. Look what I just said. Someone's being desperate. Someone is competitive. Someone's petty. Someone's controlling. Someone's manipulative. Someone's coming at the magician with some last ditch efforts at control. Please, please, guilt trips. Please, please. It's not working. It doesn't work on this person anymore. It doesn't affect them the same way because they've been disempowered this whole time. But now they're the, now they're the magician. They cannot be disempowered anymore. They cannot be... You can't unknow something. It's like they didn't know that they could say no. They didn't feel like they could say no. They felt beholden. They felt guilty. They felt entrapped. Not anymore. Not anymore. There's a clean victory. This is a victory coming out of nowhere. This is the hand coming out of the sky and giving you the sword. Giving you the sword. Look at the crown, look at the, the wreath, the laurel, the yads. Complete empowerment, complete victory, power, communication, clear, direct communication. How do you cut through this? How do you cut through, please, please, please? No. 
no. Like you're training a dog, no. I always lower my voice when I'm training dogs. No. Who did it? Who did it? They used to what the, the dog, you know, that's what, that's what you're discovering how to use your words. No. Not with me. Not this time. Not anymore. Clear, direct communication. You're cutting through all the bullshit. You're, the magician is cutting through. They're taking the sword out and they're phew, cutting right through that bullshit. I feel it. I feel their power. Ooh. That one came out really... Look at you're winning. You're winning this battle. Look at all these staves coming up. They're, they're literally the staves that are being held in this card. And this is literally you fighting them off. And you are winning. You are holding on to your valor. You are holding on to your courage, your bravado, your, your sense of empowerment. You finally have it. You have the power. You have the power to say no. Look at this. Look at this. Fuckery. Complete fuckery. Look at that. Manipulation. Someone's manip someone has been trying to keep manipulating you. They were getting away with it before. They're not getting away with it anymore. This came out in between these two cards. It came out like this. I went for that first because I was drawn to. But it came out with these two cards. The Queen of Wand, Wands and the Hierophant. Okay? So this could be a female. This could be... Fuckery coming from a female who had a sense of entitlement. Normally, the Queen of Wands is feisty, she's bold, she's charismatic, but there's a dark undertone to this. Normally, the Hierophant is the outer form of religion. It's following convention, but this has a dark undertone to it. So the dark undertone with this fuckery card in the middle is a feminine who is manipulating her personality. She's What you see is now what you get. Following convention is not the right thing to do here. She was manipulating someone into thinking following convention, doing what she, following her convention was the right thing to do or following protocol or following the rules or following an established order, an established way of doing things was the right thing. And that's not the case. It was fuckery this entire time. And now you know, now you know better. And now you're empowered to say, Get the fuck out of here. I feel it. Ooh, look where you lead. Look where you, look where you, it leads you. Look, victory. Six of wands, two of wands. You are, you get to leave. You get to leave this fuckery situation with your good standing, with your pride, with your honor intact. There's also something public about this. This is a public win. So it's like everyone gets to see the truth. Everyone gets to see who was acting with integrity, who is not acting with integrity. And it's definitely you coming out the winner. And now you get to decide what you're going to do next. Now you're free. The two of wands is expansion. It's partnership. It's I have the world in my hand and I have the stave of power in my other hand. I even have another stave of power bolted into my castle. See, here we go again, the lilies and the roses. And when they're in a cross, an equal cross, do I have any here? When I say an equal cross, not the Catholic cross where it's shorter and then, you know, long on the bottom. An equal cross is just like this, where it's equal in length on all these sides. That's a balance, a balance of energies. This person is now completely balanced in their energies. They're balanced between thought and desire. They're on the same page internally with themselves. And they win. They win over all of the fuckery. There's been a major battle that's been won. There's that full moon. There's that full moon. I think it's Sagittarius. Um, is that Sunday, Monday? This is my little Jetsons top. Do you like it? I think of, um, the Jetsons. Like I'm going to go my little space car, my little green space car and like fly away. So this is awesome. This is fucking awesome. Well done you, because you get to leave not only in the right. See, this is a person that's winning but it's a hollow win. You win, but you lose a friend. You win, but you lose respect. You win, but you lose the big picture. And he's smiling because he doesn't know better. This queen of wands, whoever this is, this, and I'm getting it's a feminine. I'm really picking up that feminine fuckery here. 
she's been winning over manipulating you or another person in this situation. She's been getting away with it. But it's not really getting away with it. You're not really getting away with it. She, it's, see, it's coming back to bite her in the ass. Selfish. Queen of Wands can be very selfish. Turning dark. Selfish. Self, self-interested. Very self-interested. Very out for my own gain. Not thinking about you, what's best for you. Just thinking about what's, what's in it for me. How, what am I going to get out of this? Ooh. No, you, you're going to move on to higher pastures. Higher pastures. Greener pastures. No, you have better things to do. Ooh. Oh, strength. <gasps> okay, this is our Beauty and the Beast card. See, you have finally conquered yourself, though. That's what this is really about. This is really about you and you. I'm not talking about anybody else. This is you and you. This is a personal development. This is a personal effort. This is a personal obstacle that has been removed in removing this karmic block. You've done something or said something to someone. Maybe it's that no. Maybe it's looking into someone's eyes and saying no. I have a boundary. There's a boundary here. The boundary is where my responsibility ends and your responsibility begins. And when I shield you from the consequences of your own actions, it's bad for me. And it's not fair to me. And you asking me to burden your missteps over and over and over again is not fair to me. And I love myself enough to tell you no. And I know that I don't have to please everyone. It's not my job. It's not what I'm here to do. It's impossible. It's impossible to please everyone. So you, I got to take care of myself. This is you calming your own beast inside. This is you telling yourself that it's okay to not please everyone. That there will be people who think ill of me. And that it's okay for them to be wrong in their assessment of me. It doesn't matter what they think. It's like you wanted to be liked in the past. It's like you just wanted to be... You just wanted to be, you wanted to keep the peace. You wanted to keep the peace. You wanted to keep order. You wanted, you were doing this because it was hierophant. Like it would be, you know, because you wanted to take care of so-and-so's bills. Because you wanted to, you didn't want to see so-and-so out on the street. Or, you know, but there's a last-ditch effort going on here with this feminine. There's something fucked up going on. there, And it's like a last-ditch effort, like petty words, uh, low moves, low vibrational moves, like, fuck, I don't know. I really don't, I really don't know. I don't think that way. I mean, but it could be anything. It could be, let me try to think of something. Hold on. You know what? This is an agreement. You know what I just saw? This might not resonate for anyone. This could resonate. A little bit could resonate. The whole thing could resonate. Take it as it resonates. If you don't like something I'm saying, just assume I'm wrong. It's totally cool. You have my blessing to do that. What, what I just saw, this I could be reading for one person or for two. Okay, so but what I just saw was Breakfast at Tiffany's. Do you remember that movie? Please tell me you remember that movie. In Breakfast at Tiffany's, Audrey Hepburn plays <laughs> Lulu May, and I forgot the other guy's name, but they're both people who sell their attention. They're both people who sell their affection and live on that money. And <sighs> that is actually conventional for... Oh my God, that's right. Oh my God. Here we come full circle. Patricia O'Neill from The Fountainhead. I did, I, I was, when I first saw, Bre I had seen The Fountainhead and then I saw Breakfast at Tiffany's, I think. I think, yeah. And so when I saw that, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know her. What? 
It was so weird for me. Hey, Tia Tia. It's my little doggie. Hey, Tia Tia. Come on. Maybe she'll come up so I can show you her. She's very, very old. But when I saw this, what I saw here, I saw this. I saw this and then, okay, hold on. I'm gonna pause it and come back. Okay, I just went to put her down. She needed to just sit on the bed. Why am I showing up so pink? Weird, okay. Um, so, breakfast at Tiffany's. We were talking about breakfast at Tiffany's. So breakfast at Tiffany's, they both sell their, so the guy sells sex. He's a writer and he gets to live in this, apartment paid for by Patricia O'Neill. She's, he's, you know, the, the entertainment. And um, Audrey Hepburn is entertainment for gentlemen that like to take her out. You know, I need some money for the powder room type thing. And they come together. <laughs> Hope I'm not spoiling it for anyone who's not seen the movie yet. Um, they come together at the end. To be together and she she's the one who says I love you and she goes thanks you know it's it's real love being with someone for the sake of love was just not really something that either of them were expecting or going for or trying to achieve in their life it just happened just happened to be neighbors and it just kind of you know it just happened so in this and what I <sighs> The roundabout way of saying is this hierophant, it's following the natural order of something, but it's almost like that's the natural order. It's almost like honoring some sort of contract based on something relatable, okay? Or take that as an analogy and use it to fit the context of your life. So that could be honoring an agreement or a contract or a convention that is not based on integrity and truth and an equal give and take or an equal benefit to both parties. Let's do this. It could be any kind of agreement or contract that favors one person far more than the other. And the person who is now the magician had been honoring this agreement out of a perceived kindness, out of a perceived favor. However, it is very disruptive to the magician internally. Internally, it's no good. It's no good. Nicht gut. Nicht gut. Und so, also, This magician is incredibly strong though. Incredibly strong to be putting up with something like this. And it's either the feminine in this situation, actually it's both. It's the feminine and it's whoever the enforcer of this is. Whoever gives the magician shit about how well they're doing this, how well they're honoring this agreement is where the fuckery is. See, I'm like your tarot strategist here. This is why we, this is what, you know, <laughs> Um, so, so take this as it resonates. You look at your life and you look at the situations going on and you look where your injustices are and who's involved and see if you spot a queen of wands or a hierophant. The hierophant could be an authority figure, like an old crickety old man. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound so insensitive. But it could be, it could be an older man who, mm, his power comes from what he had built on. This hierophant ha is, this is, he only has this position because of the established order of the Catholic Church over a fucking million years. It's not from him as an individual. He didn't go be Martin Luther and fucking start his own shit, right? No. He inherited legacy. He inherited power. He built it over a long period of time. However, I don't care. 
I'm the one who, in second grade, raised my hand and asked, what was her name? If I thought of, if I think about it long enough, I'll remember her name. I guess I won't say it on YouTube. But I asked her if Jesus was a warlock. <laughs> I asked her if she thought Jesus was coming back. She said, no. So I'm like the worst with conventional religion. I don't believe in formalized religion. I never did. But this person is kind of like a Catholic church. He is the Catholic church of whatever this has to do with. He has sway. He has power. He has, you know, legacy. He has, you know, he's like the enforcer and he's part of this, he's part of this agreement. And this Queen of Wands is too. There's like two characters in this that are the fuckery. This whole deal, it's bad. It's a bad deal. It's like bad fuckery. Remember, remember the Great Gatsby? What was that guy's name? Wolfbane? I don't know, it's just like the most <laughs> obviously unethical looking businessman ever. Like the casting was just so obvious, you know, that he just looked like, his eyebrows were like, he just looked really, he just looked like some shady businessman. Wolf Tooth, I don't know, I, don't, I forgot, but it's kind of like that where these characters have been fucking around with this magician character, and I could be talking to you or the Cross Watcher, and I'll switch back and forth between everybody, so just like go with me here. But it's like this fuckery, it was hard to stand up to. Let me just put it that way. It was hard to stand up to because this Queen of Wands was you had the feminine, like a youthful, see the queen of wands, she doesn't have to be young. Remember, blur the signs, the genders and the ages. Doesn't have to be young, but her energy is young. Her energy is youthful. Her energy is like, like that young, selfish, not ambitious. It could be ambitious, but it doesn't have to be. It's just young and selfish. That's what I, it's youthful, inexperienced and selfish. Selfish, just, just, Go with selfish. And then you, the, our magician has another energy coming in, which is old. Old established order. You know, rickety old man, like I said. <laughs> Fucking rickety old man. Like the, I won't even say it because it's really mean to say. <sighs> I don't want to talk bad about movies because it's just mean. And I don't want to lower my vibration and talk negatively about movies I'm so much better than that so um <laughs> so this fuckery has been there's been a lot of deception this is deception this is fuckery this is playing dirty this is competition this is winning at all costs oh thank you these characters have been trying to win at all costs and the cost is you magician that's what the cost has been whatever the magician has been stopping or putting on hold or sacrificing. There's been a major sacrifice and there's been deception. So whatever the sacrifice has been, it hasn't been worth it. It was the cost for these two. And now the magician has that four of staves in their mind. Remember, where did I put, oh, it's still in the deck. When I first cut and I, and I, I don't ever really look up at the cards after I, cut them and start shuffling, but I just did this time and I just saw that four of staves, the 11-11 and the magician on the other side. It was like, now that the magician has something in their mind's eye to focus on and see and like visualize and want to like manifest for their own life, they're more empowered to do something good for themselves. They're more empowered to come with the glass 70% full, 75% full. And it's it's given them some clarity. It's given them some clarity too. This Ace of Swords is very clear, very, very clear in this whole pursuit. And they have been holding on. You have been holding on. You have been retaining your valor, your glory, your charisma. <sighs> tenacity, that's what I wanted to say, tenacity. You've been holding on to your tenacity throughout this whole thing tenacious but it really has taken a lot it's taken a lot of you personally it's taken a lot 
of your strength and your willpower and and you know it's for you it's taking a lot to go up against this team this young selfish feminine and this see she's backed that's what they told me um you go to hollywood and you don't have any backers it's like walking into the den of wolves you know you need a mario mag you know so it's this this feminine is backed by this power she's got she's got someone um, advocating for her. She's got someone vouching for her. She's got a protector. So that's her power. That's her backer. And that's what the magician is facing. The magician is facing this selfish, annoying feminine and this this is this is outdated. This is outdated. This is outdated. This is come this is coming down. This is crumbling down. This old established order whatever this has to do with take it as it resonates, it's coming down. It's in the process of coming down and you have a part to play in this. That's what this is. Like your outcome is you come out with your freedom and you come out the victor and you come out with a good image. You come out with a good image throughout all of this. So if you're worried about if you're worried about this Hierophant fucking up your image? They don't. They can't. They, it's no, that's not what I'm getting at all. This is a public victory. This is marching around the whole world and talking about the victory and how great it went and what you did and how, how it all played out. It's, it's like a tour of the victory tour, okay? It's like it, it wasn't just a win. You don't just win. You're expected to talk about it. You're expected to, you were a witness. You were a witness and a participant in the crumbling of this order. See, she gets this backing because she's backed by the established order and it starts and it's happening with this situation. Whatever is crumbling down, whatever, this could be family dynamics. This could be cultural things, you know, old cultures. This could be outdated everything anything outdated she's coming in thinking that she's got the power but she's just as deluded everyone here is deluded everyone here is like these two are reinforcing something they should not be reinforcing at all they should be part of the solution you're the one magician who's and been enlightened who's been woken up to the truth and that's what you ride to victory you have the truth on your side you have the integrity on your side you have no, I need a boundary here. This is fuckery. I don't care how long it's been happening. It's wrong. And for doing that, these two, it's not, I'm not going to say they go down, but they just, they get out of your space. And then you have your space to go and fucking, fucking do whatever you want. Go fucking do, like in Breakfast at Tiffany's, they end up together in the end. They go look for the cat in the ring. I mean, it's fine. You know, they, they win, you know? So what was the hard part? The hard part was getting her to like see it and to wake up to it and to just, you know, she was all conditioned in the wrong ways. She was all conditioned, like they're conditioning this youthful energy here. She doesn't know any better. Not unless she's incredibly rebel. I mean, I've always been fucking rebellious since, like I told you, Little Natalie. So not everyone's like that, though. A lot of people will take the conditioning that they're given. They won't just start going. You know. <laughs> I'd be so proud if my kid were like me like that. If they were just like establishment, establishment, I would be so proud. Maybe I'll have a little Aquarian. You know what I just, I, okay, I, I picked out this new name for like one of my sons. I'm kind of going to want to have like three sons, like um, Legends of the Fall. Remember Brad Pitt played Tristan. I forgot the other guys, but um, I wanted for the longest time, my mom hates this name. She hates both of the names, but for the longest time, I'm like, I'm going to have a son and name him Wilhelm. Wilhelm, not William, not Will. 
Wilhelm. I just like always saw it in my head the whole time. But now I, it's kind of, I don't think I'm serious about it, but I like the name Jackpot. I know my mom hates it too, but, um, but I can call him Jack for short. Jackpot. Come here. Come here. Come here, Jackpot. What'd you do? What'd you do? Jackpot. <laughs> What was I talking about? Okay, let's get another card. Sorry, guys. That was such a digression. <gasps> Whoa. Did you see that? They, they went like on either side. Two completely different cards, which makes sense that they came out like separate. They came out at the same time, but they're, they're not to be read together. This is what I'm getting. The Four of Swords is meditation, but it's also either rest from a lot of activity which is true, someone just laid down the sword. Or it's also rest before starting a big activity, which can also be true, which is true because the card that came out with it is the Eight of Staves. This is lots of communication going back and forth. This is, could be love letters, it could be emails, text messages, phone calls, snail mail, <sighs> what else? Telepathic, I mean, just messages, any kind of messages. <laughs> Look at all the staves in the air. They're in the air, they're traveling, they're like, <sighs> imagine you're one of these staves and you're just like, <laughs> where am I gonna land? Where am I gonna land? But they're in the air, they're about to land. They're right about to hit. Think about it. Oh, where am I gonna hit? Bullseye. This is before they've hit, so they're in the air, they're, they're, okay so when they hit they're gonna be like they're gonna be it's gonna be a big deal it's gonna be a big deal okay it's gonna be great but this magician you you are the magician you need a break you need to rest and rejuvenate after all of this <laughs> settles down i don't know Maybe you do. It's either you need a break from handling the situation with all the fuckery or you need to gear up and get ready for the partnership that doesn't have fuckery attached to it, that there's no petty, you know, bids for power and, you know, pleads, please, 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 please. It's beneath me. It's beneath you. Okay. <laughs> So, and you have the victory march. So you have a lot to like get yourself like geared up for, okay? Okay, everybody, let me know how this goes. And I, oh, okay. I looked at the bottom of the deck because of course I did. So the magician, now you're, now you're using your king of swords. And when you're like logistically looking at this situation and you're saying to yourself, this doesn't make any fucking sense to me. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. This is ending a major cycle of completion. When this ends, when this comes to a close, when you, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is a breakfast at Tiffany's situation. Would take it as it resonates. But when you end this, whether it's a business agreement or a breakfast at Tiffany's type situation, Whatever it is, once you end it, you will be completing a major life cycle, a major karmic cycle, and it will lead you to everything you ever wanted. Victory. You are protected. This is rewards. You're going to get rewarded for this. And what did I pull the first, what did we see the first two, first two cards? The four, yeah, the four of staves, 11, 11, and the magician. Yeah, one and the end. So this is a big deal. It's a BFD. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can go to theartigan.com slash tarot. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye.